Geography now, Greece. Ooh, let's get some gyros. Gyros, baby. Oh, oh, oh. That sounds delicious. I haven't had a good old gyro in a while. You haven't had a good gyro in a while? Why no. aren't you gyroing in the gyro? Why do we do this when we start all of our Europe videos? Like for the Italian one, we're like, hey, pasta! Yeah. And then the, the France, French one, like, Ugh, me. And now we're just saying gyro. <laughs> uh, this is a joke. I know it's pronounced. Gyro. 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 So what's better, guys? If you're from Greece, tell us what's better. A Greek gyro or a Turkish version? I don't know what they call it over there. Is that just... I know they have a very similar thing and they like argue with who invented it, but I think it was you guys. Okay. I've never been to Greece. I have been to Greece. I went to Athens. Only Athens. Nowhere else. But it was a beautiful city. The food was incredible and uh, very affordable. I really, really liked it. I really want to go back. But our base knowledge of Greece isn't too... Uh, I would say compared to other countries, it's a bit higher historical-wise. But our knowledge of Greece isn't very high. So we're here with Barb's to learn a bit about the country. I bet our, uh, compared to other countries, our knowledge about their... Uh, ancient religion is really high. Yes, that is true. <laughs> it's, it's a very popular in media, I guess yeah. you could say. Yeah, and uh, we actually like learn about that in school. Which like interesting. Yeah, it's just, it's just a cool thing to learn about. But let's check this out. This is one of Barb's old videos, clearly, because it's only 13 minutes, and Greece would definitely be like a 40-minute video oh, these yeah. days. Definitely. So let's check this out. If you want to check out our travels around the world, actually, we've been mostly based in Asia, but we've gone to Europe a few times on the channel. Uh, link in the description for that. Maybe, hopefully, one of these days we're in Greece. Yeah, I mean, there's been some cheap flights to the, from the Philippines to Greece, surprisingly. So one of these days, I mean, next year, I mean, zoop, zoop, zoop. Let's do this. You're the one that I want. You're the one that I want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You're the one that I want. You get my reference, right? You get it? I'm so clever, right? Do you get my reference? It's time to learn geography. I don't get it. I don't get it either. Hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbie. Greece is sometimes seen as like the cradle and birthplace of European civilization and thought. So much of everything you see today has some kind of correlation to Greece. Pretty heavy for a relatively small country in the Balkans, eh? Now let's find out how it all went down. I played Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so I know everything about Ooh, Greece. You do. So let's just jump into it. Greece is located in the south. I read Percy North Jackson. Oh. It stretches into the Ionian, Mediterranean, and Aegean seas, bordered by four countries in the north and east. The country is divided into 13 regions, one autonomous state that we'll talk about later, and the capital Athens, one of the oldest capitals in the world, where nearly 40% of the entire population lives. Oh, I don't know. 40% of the makeup, Greece is generally divided into nine geographic regions: Thrace, Macedonia. That's... Not to be confused with this one. Oh talked about Thessaly, Epirus, Central Greece, the Ionian Islands, the Aegean Islands, and Crete. As you can probably tell from its makeup, Greece is one of, if not probably the most, seafaring marine emphasized countries in the world. I mean, they do have the world's largest merchant marine fleet after Japan. And at any given point in Greece, you are no more than 85 miles or 137 kilometers from the sea. Greece has over 2,000... The sea in Greece is just incredible too. It's like bright blue and just, you can like see right through it when you're standing on it. So cool. And it's a very nice temperature. I enjoyed it. When the heat is getting to you in the summer. Islands, only about 220 of which are inhabited, and about 4,000 extra islets, keys, and sea rocks. Even the ones that are like right off the coast of Turkey. In fact, the only two significant islands belonging to Turkey and the Aegean are Imbros, or Kanachale, and Tenedos, or Botjada. Now, keep in mind, the Peloponnesian Peninsula is not an island. It's actually just barely connected by the Corinthian Isthmus in the city of Corinth, which has a huge canal going through. After independence from the Ottoman times, Greece was very intent on making sure they kept everything in the Aegean. This has historically led to some controversy from Turkey in regards to things like the delimitation of territorial waters, airspace, the executive economic zone, and the militarization of some of the islands. Nonetheless, they've been able to work stuff out, kind of, but some things are still left in a gray zone with the only land dispute they have over these two small scraps of land, the Imia oh. or Kardak Island. Finally, let's talk about the one autonomous state. See this little guy right here, the third finger on the weird monster claw looking peninsula? Well, that peninsula is called Halkidiki, and the third finger is Mount Athos. With a population of only about 2,000, oh, Mount Athos, or where only men can go or whatever. Oh. Isolated, monastic state, completely 
run by monks and priests. Getting in is a little tough. The number of daily visitors is restricted. You have to have a special permit, and you have to be a dude. No women allowed. Although historically, some women have Weird been dudes. or intentionally got in, including this former Greek beauty pageant winner. She dressed up as a man and snuck in. The three largest cities <laughs> are, of course, Athens, the capital, Thessaloniki, and Patras. However, the three largest and busiest airports are Athens, Heracleion on Crete, and then Thessaloniki coming in at third. Speaking of Crete, each inhabited island in Greece kind of has its own charm. Of course, there are too many things to list, but a few to consider might be things like Corfu being the most family-friendly island. Delos is mm -hmm. known for being the legendary birthplace of Apollo. Skyros and Hydra are kind of like the quiet islands where more people use mules than cars. Rhodes oh. once held the Colossus, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Caria once tried to become its own country at one point in time. Naxos and Paros are known for being the windy islands, great for sailing and water sports. Santorini with its ridiculously picturesque cliffside white marble villas. And Patmos, the incredibly significant religious site in which Jesus' disciple John was exiled and wrote the book of Revelation. Speaking of which, hmm. Greece has more archaeological... It's crazy how many of those names... We were like planning a trip around different Greek islands and stuff. So I know some of them from our planning, but also just how many like different names I know from different media like games Movies books things like that of those like different names. It's crazy. It's really crazy Sites per capita than any other country in the world only ranks behind a few other countries like Turkey and Mexico in terms of overall sites Now we all know Greece is a tourist hotspot like France more tourists than the entire population of Greece visit Greece every single year Now we crazy. all know about the Acropolis and the Parthenon But other cool sites that stick out include the Meteora Pillar Cliff Monastery, Wanna go there. Necromantion of Ephyra, the Oracle of Delphi, St. Theodore's Chapel there. with 17 oak trees sprouting with no visible evidence oh. of roots, the sculpted face Whoa. on the shore of Nisi, the Chios former leper colony. Wow, that was palace, really face like face. And of course, hundreds and hundreds of other sites. There are too many to list, and if you know of any, please write them down in the comments below and share. In the meantime, we gotta get down to the foundations of the country, the land. <laughs> now, there's an old like he, he, like he mentioned, we were planning to go to Gre Greece. I think we made a whole Greece trip, but we instead went to Iceland and Italy. That was one of our options of our 10 options we made. It was like COVID stuff. We didn't know if it would be yeah. open or not. Yeah, so Iceland was one of the first places in Europe to open and we were able to get there. So I don't know. It was really unfortunate, but we had an awesome trip planned. And then we ended up about a year later moving to Georgia for a few months. And we were planning to go through Turkey and then into Greece and into the Balkans. And that didn't work out either, and somehow we ended up in Asia. Yep, and we've been in Asia for like the last two years. Yeah, so we've had so many plans, we've done so much research, just to actually go and do this someday will be so cool. So cool. So, one day. He took the leftover rocks, threw them behind his shoulder, and that's how Greece was made. I, I kind of paraphrase that a little bit, don't quote me on it. Too late, there's a quote now. Now, Greece is funny because land-wise, they don't exactly score high on the soil performance index, and overland transportation has always been an issue. But when you pretty much dominate the maritime trading sector, you can kind of turn a semi-arid rock zone into a flourishing agrarian hub. And wait till we get to the Israel episode. They've done quite an interesting... I can't job. believe you've been so much money love in his people. The on the West Bank. Bank. I don't care about the West Bank. Talk about me. Talk about the... Rock. First of all, the country's about 80% mountainous on both the mainland wow. Balkan region and the islands. Two main mountain chains form along the Balkan mainland, the Pindus in the west and the Rhodopes in the northeast, Macedonia and Thrace regions. Right around the area where Thessaly meets Macedonia, you find Mount Olympus. The We're going to climb that. That yeah. was our plan. I don't know how well that would have gone, but we wanted to. That would have been cool. That would have been so cool. It's... um. I remember being in Athens, I was surprised how, like, I don't know if it was just the time of year I was there, it was in the summer, but how dry the and, like, arid the landscape was. It was really interesting. In Greece, notable for being the legendary home of the ancient Greek that would have been a sick climb. We used to climb a lot back then, too. I don't think we could do that I don't anymore. Know if we could. I don't know if we could. <laughs> Nonetheless, the largest river, Aliakmonos, flows through the Pindus Range and eventually empties into the Thermaic Gulf right by the Monster Claw. Also, Trihonida, the largest lake, can be found in the south-central Greek region. Beautiful, right? Well, it comes at a cost. Greece is one of the most seismically active countries in the world as it lies ah, on two major tectonic plate zones, the North Anatolian Fault and the Hellenic Trench. This means that although frequent, earthquakes in Greece are relatively mild because they usually have epicenters that are in the sea, or, you know, Turkey just kind of takes the biggest hit. Greece gets about 250 days of pure sunshine a year. 7% of the Crazy. world's marble mines are found in Greece, and they're also the third largest olive oil producer. Speaking of which, oh. if you've never had Greek food, you are not allowed to die until you do. Popular dishes like so Osaka, Spanakopita, the classic 
classic Greek salad, pita with gyros, the real kind, not that cheap sleazy stuff down on 14th Street in which half the meat is made of cornmeal. Nonetheless, agriculture only makes up about 4% of their economic output. Jeez. Most of the revenue at over 80% comes from tourism and service 80%. jobs. Otherwise, some notable spots in nature would be places like the Vikos Gorge, the Sami Ow. Cave in Cephalonia, Ow. the Siri E. Kalter Blue-Eyed Spring, volcanic rocks of Lemnos, Neda oh. Waterfalls, Hozar Hot Springs, and so much more. Oh, come on, we gotta go now. Like a we gotta. Rugged seafaring realm of merchant ships and olives. I said that like three minutes ago and skipped this whole segment. Well, on to the next. Then the video would only be like nine minutes. Winston yeah. Churchill once said, Greeks don't fight like heroes. Heroes fight like Greeks. First of all, Greece has about 11 million people and has one of the highest aging populations in Europe. The vast majority of the country, at about 93%, are made up of ethnic Greeks, and the remaining 7% are mostly made up of other groups like Albanians, Gypsies, and Turks. They use the Type-C and F plug outlets, they use the Euro as their currency, although prior to the Euro, they used the Drachma, which was the oldest consistently used currency in the world, and they drive- I got a lot of Drachma in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, pretty much anyone that has ever been to school at around age 12 will know how much Greek history has played a role in the Western yes. world. The history is too long to explain it in detail, but in the quickest way I can put this, Minoans, Mycenaeans, tribes and city-states fighting against Persians at Thermopylae, which is where Gerard Butler came in and did this, Alexander the Great Perfect. ushered in the Macedonian Empire. <coughs> Dude, he was what? Greek. No, he no, was yes, not Greek. He, yes, he, he was, was never Greek. How many times? He... Then there was classical Greece, Roman Greece, Byzantine Greece, Ottoman Greece, and then finally a revolution led by this guy in 1821 that started the modern version of Greece that we have today. Thanks to Alexander the Great, multiple regions on three continents experienced some form of Hellenization or the influence of Greek culture and language, and it went all the way down into the Byzantine era. This means at one point wow. in time, even black Africans were speaking Greek, or at least the ancient Koine Greek language. It became so widespread that today almost every language in Europe invokes some kind of Greek origin in certain languages. For example, in English, we have academy, telephone, grammar, and even geography. Not only that, <laughs> but Greek has in one way or another been spoken for over 3,000 years, making it possibly the oldest consistently spoken and written language in the world. And the Shang uh -huh. Dynasty. Ah, moving on. We could go on and on talking about Greece's explosively fascinating ancient history enshrined with legend, myth, wars, warriors, trade, alliances, gods, beasts, Sparta, sculpture, arts, leaders, philosophers, games, and interesting clothing options. Wow. Well, that'll take too oh. long, and we gotta get through this episode. About 90% of the people in Greece adhere to Christianity, mostly in the Eastern Orthodox branch, just like many other countries in the Slavic world. If you've ever met a Greek person, you'll know that most of them definitely have a unique way of carrying themselves. Many of you Greek geographies, or as I like to call you, geography, Greeks have told me that the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding is actually kind of a pretty accurate representation of a typical Greek family upbringing. A little exaggerated, but nonetheless not far off. Big families with strong opinionated parents that you do not talk back to. There's always like a uh. weird grandma mumbling something about the Turks, and one of the cousins is probably lighting something on fire as your brother is getting into a fight. But when grandma brings in the souvlaki and moussaka, everyone sits down and it's like a beautiful warm Norman Rockwell painting. At least that's the picture you Geogra Greeks have painted for me. I don't know, how was that? Was that in the ballpark? So anyway, <laughs> in Greece, voting is required by law as Interesting. Is for men ages 16, yeah, that's right, 16. They get them while they're young. Whoa. Up to 45. Get them while they're young. In the service. Many people celebrate name day instead of their birthdays, in which they have a party on the day that pertains to the patron saint that they got their name from. Land is kind of limited, so to save space, many of the dead have their bodies exhumed after five years oh. of being buried, and then the bones are washed in wine and then placed in an ossuary. Retirement homes oh. are incredibly rare, as most Greek parents typically end up living in their children's homes. Traditional music can be found everywhere. You'll probably hear a lot of lutes, mandolins and tambourines. Traditional dances are alive and well. They all usually incorporate some kind of group number with fast-paced movements and jumpy actions. Oh, and old guys smoking while playing backgammon. There's always old guys smoking and playing backgammon. Avoid the offensive mutsa hands. And just like we studied in the Estonia episode, Greece has an influx of women. Like, a lot. Somewhere around 60-65% to of the population is female. Really? This may or may not be the reason why Greece is also the world's most... How can I put this in a non-crude and vulgar phrasing for our children viewers? Um... Uh, Greece is the most hey hey active country in the world. They even beat Brazil. Brazil. Interestingly enough, Greece also has the lowest divorce rate in the EU as well. Speaking of that, okay, let's talk about some numbers. Brutal, brutal, sometimes image tarnishing numbers. Let's just address the elephant in the room and get it over with, okay? Yes, Greece is in a little bit of an economic pickle right now. Basically, in a nutshell, back in 2001, Greece joined the EU. Long story short, they misrepresented their financial statements, they entered an IMF and ECB memorandum, and now the current generation is paying for all the fiscally irresponsible actions the previous one made with things like hiked taxes as well as salary and pension cuts. You know, son, back in my day, 
Yeah, back in your day, you ruined my day. Greece also has the highest unemployment rate in the EU as well, with nearly a quarter of the population seeking wow. jobs. Nonetheless, as depressing as that sounds, Greece actually, interestingly enough, has the lowest suicide rate in the EU. Now, before we move on, here are some rapid-fire notable contributions Greece has made to the world. Inventions like the water mill, alarm clocks, lighthouses, the crane, construction levers, catapults, a crude steam engine, central heating, and technically the first robot. Concepts like citizenship, early democracy, atom theory, various so of mathematics like geometry, advancements in disease study and medicine, philosophy, theater, dynamic sculpture and art, written history, trial by jury, and of course, the Olympics. Notable wow. Greeks would probably include- That's a country that currently has a population of 11 million out of the 8 billion people in the world. That's insane how much- Gotta be the most, like, possibly, at least invention-wise, they were showing there, possibly the most influential per capita. What a contribution to the societies of the world right there. Wow. Anathostinus, Leonidas, Pericles, Homer, Plutarch, Euripides, Pythagoras, Euclid, Archimedes, and Apollonius, Herodotus, and also- Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Alex. No. 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 Yes. Yes. No. I'm gonna he say- is He is not Greek. Yes, he, he is. is. Modern contemporaries like Konstantinos Karathiadori, who taught Einstein, singer Nana Muscuri, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, yep, he's actually half Greek, Tommy Lee, Yanni, soccer players, Giorgio Samaras, Giorgios Karayunas, Konstantinos Mitroglou, this crazy guy who ran like a thousand miles in 11 days, Queen Sophia of Spain, and of course, America's Greek sweetheart, John Stamos. Don't even try to get on this list. Okay, friend time. I have a decent amount of those uh, famous people, Greece which is, is uncommon. Like for these videos. Yeah, it is. They planted so many shifting diplomatic ties throughout the millennia that it's ridiculous. In a nutshell, though, they generally get along pretty well with other Orthodox countries, mostly Eastern Europe, as theology and doctrine have always tied them in one way or another. Of those Orthodox countries, Serbia is probably hands down the closest childhood friend. Serbians are like the next door neighbor that they grew up with asking if Greece could come out and play ball. Nonetheless, you don't have to be Orthodox to roll with Greece. Greeks love the Spanish and Italians almost as much. Each country shares a similar Mediterranean and seafaring culture that has historically tied them for thousands of years, although each claim that they have the best olive oil. Greeks have even adopted certain Italian words in their vernacular, like una pazza, una razza, one face, one race. And as mentioned before, Armenia is kind of like the exotic apostolic girlfriend they've been dating since like the 3rd century AD. Turkey is kind of like the whole Japan-South Korea thing in which historically they've had a lot of drama because, you know, Ottoman times, but they love to visit and piggyback off of each other's cultures. Today, there is virtually no tension between everyday citizens. They've moved on, mostly, and sometimes it's even hard to distinguish a Greek person from a Turk just by looking at them. But make Make sure you do not make the mistake of mislabeling them. That's a ah. huge no-no. When it comes to their best friend, though, almost every geographer Greek told me Cyprus. Many Greeks don't even Cyprus. race in Cyprus as a separate country, but rather just an extension of Greece. They love their little brothers with funny accents and would do anything. In conclusion, modern-day Greece may only make up about 132,000 square kilometers, but has been the standard source of inspiration for so much of the Western world. The fact is, today, you can look around and see how much of our modern society has been in some way, shape, or form molded by something Greek. Kudos to you, Greece. Stay tuned. Oh. Grenada is coming up next. Greece. My gosh, the influence of that small country across the world. I mean, if they influenced the Western world, the Western world influenced so much of the rest of the like yeah. Eastern world and stuff too, especially with colon colonization and stuff like that too. So Greece, that's crazy. Whether by good means or bad means, it has influenced the rest of the world. Uh, that's always how it works. <laughs> that, Interesting. Yeah, that is surprising. That's, surprisingly, this may have been the video, Geography Now Wise, that we've known the most about. Yeah. I would say. That or Italy, probably. Yeah. Greece is just one of those staple countries. Everybody wants to go there. Everybody knows something about it, except maybe Americans. They, Americans don't know anything about anything. They really. might have even invented staples there. They probably did. They invented everything, apparently. <laughs> We're going there sometime, but we're doing a full-on adventure. I'm, mark my words. Let us know where to go and more videos we can watch to learn about Greece. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.